to what extent to emphasize in the message problem and to what extent to emphasize opportunity. I'm also wondering if there may be different answers to the question if we're one year into it versus five years into it versus ten years into it. There may be a what is the good initial level initial, of conceptual right. We are in the initial <laughs> phase, so that would <laughs> clarify that piece of it, yeah. So let, let, me, let me kind of re-clarify what, what, what I'd like to see come out of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been thinking about this and working on it and developing kind of ways of speaking about it, thinking about it for you know a couple of decades now in a very intentional way. And, you know, so I'm really, really frightened. <laughs> to use a, a mind metaphor, I've got a lot of stuff, and it took me a long time to kind of climb my way up to it. And what what I'd like to see happen here is, given a particular team focus, what information can do you want from us out of all of that thinking that might help inform the team? So the question mm -hmm. you know that y'all came up with is what level of abstraction is appropriate in the story is, a, you know, I think a great example mm -hmm. of something we all need to think about, and mm -hmm. I have some thoughts to it, and we'll, after we hear some more questions, I'll share some of that. But the idea right now is, what's a question that as we talk about it, it's going to help this group grow and get clarity around mm -hmm. what well, its work is? Well, then, as a member of the team, I want to throw something back in that is going to possibly expand one point, which is we talked about consequences. I, you, you heard what I said when I took the stone. Um, I'm very concerned if we're going to be consciously evolutionary, whatever platform is there, whatever story we tell about the platform, that it gets people thinking not just about what they have a fire in their belly, belly in their belly to do, but whether they can rise to the next evolutionary level and come to understand that not only what they want to do, but the unintended consequences mm -hmm. are worth thinking about. Mm -hmm. That's something that needs to be, I think, to be evolutionary, to be metamorphic, is, is essential in the story. Mm -hmm. How, and I want to stress, although please take over, because I'm, again, I'm championing what you said, but I really like the idea that we treat ourselves with patience and as learners. There are people beyond our little group that can provide input to us, that can help us understand what we're trying to do, that can help us make what we're doing more participative to more people out there beyond the circles in which we happen to travel right now. I would love to see that as well. So there's another question to the group. First, how do we tell the story that invites criticalness, invites that questioning of all the things that we might achieve, and the second one is how do we make it more participative? Mm -hmm. So let me try to condense that one too. Sure. How large a time and how great a population should we integrate over? We need to integrate over a larger time. Is this a main question? Time and yeah, how, because the story, how, how, how large a time period are we addressing? Because the consequences are about what happens later, not right now. Yeah, and me. how large a population do we need to integrate over? We need to integrate over time and people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how much time? How many people? Uh, changes the approach. Because it changes the story tremendously. And uh, to make it accessible. And you guys were talking about story and what the proper level of abstraction is. I don't think I've ever read a story that hasn't been focused around, you know, a small number of people as the sort of protagonists that carry some sort of moral, <coughs> which would be an abstraction forward. So um, that's just one thing I've been thinking about. Yeah, right. and there's a, that book, The Pastures of Heaven, which is about the Salinas Valley. It's like a Steinbeck book, and it's just all these little, little random stories of there's all this weird stuff going on in the Salinas Valley, and it's, I'm not really sure what, it's, it's a weird book, but I don't know, it's just something that came to mind. You know, you're right. If it's not concrete, that, it doesn't matter. There's yeah. something that's that goes with that, and that is, what it, what the universal under story is the universal. Yeah. So what story is doing is using the, the specific to communicate an experience of the universal in many cases and mm -hmm. also to give detail, you know, to, you know, interest, you know, this is my story, I'm interested in my story, but at some point 
a story is about what are the universal forces at work mm -hmm. and how do we manage them, how do we live with them. It's something that Tibetans have done a really good job of figuring out a lot about. So there's a, at Stanford there's the Sea Cares program, which mm -hmm. we would want to probably include as a huge lever in the materials we put together. <coughs> So we want to recruit James Thurber to write us a parable. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, actually, I want to say, you know, a, a restatement of what what was my main question is, who are we telling this story to? Because yeah. if we don't know who we're telling the story to, it doesn't really, you know, we could we can reshape this story a lot of different ways, like the Buddha did, you know? I mean, you talk to different people in different sects of Buddhism, and they have very different beliefs. Why do they have different beliefs? Because the Buddha spoke to different groups. He spoke to farmers differently than he spoke to uh, the elite. And um, there's still, you know, some essential truth that's being put out there. Our primary story, but but we ha do have to we have to speak the language of the people that we're talking to, or we can forget it. So let me just make a process observation. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I like some things I'm seeing here that demonstrate that there is an interest in supporting learning within the group. So there have been several, mm -hmm. a couple of instances now where, you know, Howard a couple of times, you one time, where basically you've taken what somebody has said mm -hmm. and you have restated it or amplified it mm -hmm. in a way that demonstrates not only that you heard it, but you want to reinforce it. And, mm -hmm. and make sure that it you know gets absorbed by the group. So that's an active contribution to growing mm -hmm. us here. And it, mm -hmm. so I just encourage that kind of, of uh, paraphrasing and acknowledgement and appreciating mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. as, as the lubricant that makes a generative system mm -hmm. grow. So I think that uh, to add one more thing about the danger and opportunity is that those of us who understand the yin and yang, that it is a whole, mm -hmm. And it's a dynamic whole. But whatever people that we're talking to are experiencing, if it's danger, we need to draw out the opportunity side from them. If it's opportunity, we need to make them aware of the dangers too by drawing it out of them, not trying to tell them. And then, it, so we, we might have a different story for different people or even at different times, right? That's excellent point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's move to another.